الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My sisters in Islam السلام عليكم once again <coughs> and I thank you for inviting me to this uh, noble uh, this noble work of yours may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen you and enlighten your hearts My sisters in Islam the topic that has been assigned is وَكَذَلِكَ يَجْتَبِيكَ رَبُّكَ which means, and just like that, O Yusuf, your Lord has chosen you and favoured you. This verse appears in Surah Yusuf, as you know, when Yusuf السلام, saw a dream. And in that dream, he saw that the sun and the moon and 11 planets prostrating to him. And Allah says to him, just like the way that he chose you and showed you in your dreams, Allah has chosen you also to be a special and favored person. My sisters in Islam, in a time that we are going through right now, there is nothing more that we need than words of encouragement from our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and from the Quran to return back to it and understand it. For we are living now in a time that is unprecedented. And what's happening now, I cannot think of any in the Quran, honestly, personally, that describes our situation than the verse where Allah said, Inna Allah, Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusin. Allah indeed does not change the blessed state of a people, the state of comfort, the state of provision, the state of showering them with and so on, security, until the people change their own state, meaning the people move away from the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah never takes any pleasures away from people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rahim, He's most merciful. He created Adam alayhi salam in paradise and He started off the humans in Jannah and gave us the opportunity. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't change, we change. And this is called ibtila. Ibtila means the subhanahu wa ta'ala, He allows us to have choice, but in that choice, there has to come certain trials. Why are these trials there? Because in trials, we learn, we grow, we reflect on ourselves. We know what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us وَيَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ fitna. He tries you with bad and good as a fitna. Ibtila in the Arabic language means التقلب من حال إلى حال Changing from state to state. Allah continues to toss and turn us from state to state. We never stay complacent in our comfort zone. We keep changing. We are Things happen around us randomly, suddenly, without our choice. In order for us to what? Um, fitna. Fitna in the Arabic language is used for fire or test or exam. And fitna is used when the fire is blown into the gold or into material that's extracted from the earth. And the gold is separated from all the unwanted material. So Allah puts us through trials and hardships and good. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we try you with bad and with good. We perceive it bad, but to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's good. We perceive it good, but maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that it's bad for us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what He does for us is that He makes us go through different states so that we can grow and we can learn. And now this is throughout the world, the mosques are closed. The haramain are basically closed. We can't see our family properly. Uh, we're not allowed to go and hear that al tarawih is, is cancelled. Our iftar with our family is gone. Our atikaf, no more, for the time being. However, rest assured, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not leave this ongoing. He will lift it. But who of us after it is going to learn and grow? And who of us is going to continue? My sisters in Islam, this topic that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses people and favors them, it does not come for free. Allah doesn't just 
you know, brings someone to life and then picks and chooses randomly who he wants to be favored and chosen. There obviously has to be an effort and a work from us for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have chosen you. Now, ishtiba or to be chosen and favored, usually it's the prophets and messengers who are chosen and favored above all people. Among them as well is Maryam alayhi salam. Allah said, Allah ya Maryam, inna Allah stafaki wa tahharaki wa stafaki ala nisa il alameen. And when Allah said to Maryam, O oh Maryam, Allah has chosen and favored you by taking you out of the family of Aaron and a good family by him knowing in his unseen uh, knowledge what Maryam alayhi salam is going to become. And then he said, And he also purified you and chose you above all the women. Why did he say he chose her above all the women of the world? It is because Allah knew what Maryam is going to go through and how she is going to be the best, the best example of patience and perseverance and Iman and humbleness and strength for all the women to come because what she's going to represent is something that is special to women. And so Allah chose her knowing that she will go through these trials and she will come out triumphant to the point that she will be the greatest example. So Allah He chose you above all the women of the world. My dear sisters in Islam, do you know what it means when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses and favors someone? It means that Allah is going to make that person a benefit for others. Why did Allah choose the prophets and messengers? so they can be a benefit for others. If Allah has chosen you, get ready. Get ready that you are going to have to be a benefit for others. People to you. Allah is going to send people to you to, for help. You are going to be that person who is equipped with the strength and the ability and the knowledge and the wisdom somehow to help these people more than the majority of other people. Always remember that if Allah chooses someone it means there is a mission, a mission. Allah doesn't just choose someone and leave them on the corner like that on, as a footnote. The more the mission is, the more benefit you have for more others come to you, the more wisdom you increase in, the more challenges that you go through. No, my dear sister, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highly likely could have chosen you because of something that you have passed and being triumphant in. My sisters in Islam, Allah doesn't just choose and favor someone based on their color or their race or their gender or anything like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't choose based on injustice and fairness. Secondly, it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows who deserves to be chosen and who, who deserves to be favored. It's not you or me who choose it. I can't look at myself and think, subhanAllah, uh, I've been seeing dreams lately and in those dreams they're becoming true every time I see a dream subhanallah it happens some people they say this to me and you look at their life subhanallah without judging them but you can see subhanallah they're the furthest away from the deen maybe that's a call maybe in the future this person is going to become chosen in some way but not like that Allah says in the Quran فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى Never praise yourselves in piety. Allah is the one who knows who is truly pious. And taqwa here means someone who protects and restrains themselves from everything sinful and haram in order to save themselves from the wrath of Allah and from the punishment of Allah and from losing the love of Allah and from the fire. These are very special people who have to stay away in taqwa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses them. There is also another danger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that if a person praises themselves in piety and talks themselves up and tries to put themselves in a position of favoritism and try to earn the eyesight of people and that people can praise them, then this is actually the opposite of Allah choosing that person. The opposite of choosing that person it's the opposite of favoritism because it is not you who chose it is not Allah who chose that person it is that person who is trying to choose themselves and get into fame and popularity 
So Allah chooses you, subhanAllah. And my dear sisters, if Allah chooses a person, it's not necessary that they're going to be known or that they're going to be popular or famous. Some people are unknown, yet their benefit to people is more than anyone who is famous. Some people work on as of this society. They go through trials that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen them. Remember that woman in the time of the Prophet who used to clean the masjid, she was unknown to the people. She was an ex-slave. And when she died, they did her janazah and prayed on her. And they didn't tell the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam why. Well, people didn't know her that well. So he we said, where is that woman that used to clean the masjid? And he said, Ya Rasulullah, she passed away yesterday. And he was wearing his, his cloak. He used to wear a cloak. And it was off his shoulders a little bit. He put it on hastily. Still hastily, not nicely. Out of hastiness. And he said, why didn't you tell me so I may pray janazah? He went straight to her grave and prayed, Allahu Akbar. Someone who was not known how special she was. Or a man once passed by the companions and, and they said, look at this man. He is running for work and running forth and money. If only he used that strong body, fi sabilillah, in the cause of Allah. Rasulullah said, if he is going to provide his family or so that he can not beg other people or so that, you know, he, uh, and so that he can be giving, not taking, then it is fi sabilillah. How do you know that this person who nobody really knows here, if he were to make one dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah would accept it without any hesitation more than any of you. Only Allah ta'ala knows who those chosen people are. But once you are chosen, you're going to be given a mission and a benefit. This is the bottom line. My dear sisters in Islam, a person who is chosen is generally a stranger. A stranger doesn't mean he is weird or unknown only. He could be very known or she could be very known. But a stranger means that while other people sleep, they are awake. While other people are lazy, they are working. While other people think that something is normal when, in as a matter of fact, it's wrong or sinful, he or she can recognize it from, from a thousand kilometers away. They know that it is wrong and they stay away from it to the point where they become like strangers to everyone else because it looks like they're the ones who are abnormal and everyone else is normal because we are in a time where Rasulullah told us one of the five things that will happen. He said that to uh, his companions. And one of the things is that when indecency and fahisha is spread throughout the world and then you will see diseases that have, diseases come out in the people that never existed before them. And you find that they are normal, they've, normalize this dirty act and you become that stranger subhanallah rasulullah said islam gharibun wa sayaud gharibun kama bada fatuba lil ghuraba islam began strange and it shall return strange as it began so glad tidings to those who are strangers on that day my dear sisters in islam in order to be chosen by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and favored with that mission you the person requires two things that have to be at their height iman and sabr, where you know Allah and believe in Him fully in your heart with tawakkul and trust and belief with no doubts. Number two, that you say it with your tongue without any hesitation and you act upon it with your limbs. Sabr, to be patient, and patience has three meanings. Whoever can do all those three meanings has the ultimate sabr. Number one is to be patient in doing the things which Allah had commanded us to do. And this is the highest form of sabr, to not give up to the point where you begin to love it. Number two, to be patient in staying away from sins and haram, even if you are, if, if, if your desires challenge you and they wrestle with you, subhanAllah, you stay away from them. This is also sabr. And the last sabr is when calamities befall you, when hardship befalls you, when sicknesses befall you, when uh, challenges befall you, ibtila befalls you in this life, and you are able to still rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not lose yourself and keep yourself held together. And this is also Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, even though this hadith is slightly weak, its meaning is correct, he said, As sabr min al iman, bimanzilatir ra'si min al jasad. Sabr and iman is like the head and the body. In other words, فَمَنْ لَا صَبْرَ لَهُ لَا إِمَانَ لَهُ Whoever does not have sabr has no iman. 
But there is a verse in the Quran also which emphasizes this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا كَمَا صَبَرُوا وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُوقِنُونَ And we made among them leaders, examples. You could be a leader, you could be an example for others. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, by our will, when? when they became fully patient, when they exercised patient, when they went through struggles of good and bad, and they proved their patience, and they were true believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we made them leaders. And uh, in this verse, that sabr and iman go hand in hand as the highest quality of someone whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses. My dear sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did choose the prophets and the messengers mostly However, he left room for others who follow them to also be similar to them and to be chosen. And not necessarily that you have to be chosen in everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes chooses people in certain areas, in certain skills. He puts them through trials, and then when they trial and they are triumphant, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he qualifies them and he gives them a mission. Then he gives you another trial. And then when you try a triumphant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now continues a second rank. And then another trial comes along. When you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only puts trials in your life and my life, and you start to pass them one by one. You know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa lillahi al al-a'la. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs the greatest examples. Example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes like a per yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes excited that he wants this person to be chosen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants this person to be special. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy when he sees a person passing his trials, and that is why Rasulullah was asked by Sayyid radiallahu anhu, or was it Sa'd ibn Abu Qas, I think he said, Ya Rasulullah, who are the ones who have the greatest trial on earth? And he said, Al Anbiya, the Prophets. And then he asked, who else? He said, ثم الأمثل فالأمثل. Then the ones who are closest to them in following them, and the ones who are after them in following them, and then the ones who are after that, until Rasulullah said that a person could be inflicted with so many trials on earth to the point where he will be or she will become a person who passes all their trials to the point where this person begins walking on earth while they have absolutely no sins upon them whatsoever. Allahu Akbar. حَتَّى يَمْشِي عَلَى الْأَرْضِ وَلَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ خَطِيَةً This is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says. So my sisters in Islam, the chosen people cannot be chosen until they go through trial. And what did we say ibtilat means? It means the flip-flopping, changing, constant shifting, the fluctuation from state to state. Sometimes it's sudden. Sometimes you are not expecting it. And suddenly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes something from you. And the more beloved it is to you, the more the trial is greater. And the greater the trial is, the greater Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that person. But obviously they have to be a mu'min. The greater the person passes that trial, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings you closer to him and gives you a medal of honor. Let's call it a medal of honor. Al-Ishtiba or Al-Istifa, where he has purified you and chosen you where you belong at a rank. But it doesn't stop there. You then become a person who other people can rely on. Listen to these beautiful signs of a person who has been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala walking on earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet said, you all know this long hadith, Man aada li waliyan. فَقَدْ آذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْبِ whoever takes, as an, whoever takes as an enemy, any of my awliya, a wali is a person who is extremely close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's see what a wali is. I have declared war against that person. وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّ افْتَرَطُّهُ عَلَيْهِ We're talking now about how a person rises in rank from a wali or until they become a mushtaba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there isn't anything that my slave keeps coming closer to me with than the acts of worship which I made compulsory upon him or her. They're the most beloved things to Allah. وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ And then after that my slave continues 
to get closer to me with voluntary acts. These are things that you're not even commanded to do. You do them because you love Allah. You do them because you have felt the sweet pulsary acts because you do them from your heart you see there's a sweetness subhanallah that develops once you become becomes a habit with you and then you become start doing the voluntary prayers voluntary dhikr, voluntary actions until allah subhanahu wa says Hatta uhibbu, until i begin to love that person when i love this person i become the hearing which he or she hears with and hearing here doesn't mean this ear, this mechanical ear, hearing in here, to be able to hear in your heart. And that's a separate type of sama. This, this type of sama, this type of hearing is when there is uh, someone says something and Allah gives you the wisdom and the ability to hear through it, to hear through it, to tell right from wrong, to know sin from good, to be able to, and, and then your ears become comforted with listening to the things which please Allah and they become discomforted with the things that displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, and a person could be deaf, they can't hear, subhanAllah, but they can hear heart and mind, subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala does this. And sometimes if you can hear, then your ears become uncomfortable and unpleasant when you listen to things that displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala naturally. This is one sign that Allah loves this person. Number two, and I become his foresight which with which he sees with or she sees with so that your eyes become discomforted from seeing the things which displease Allah and they become comforted with the things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with and you can see through the things to recognize right from wrong and this is called a deep sort of wisdom and I become his hand to which he touches with and his legs which he walks with if he or she were to ask me I will give him or her and if they were to seek refuge in me I will I will protect them this is this beautiful India Allah says in the Hadith Al-Qudsi and there is nothing that I've hesitated more I've never hesitated from doing anything. Like the way I hesitate from taking the soul, the soul of a mu'min at the time of their death. He or she hates death. But he or she must die because this is the qadr. And I hate to harm him or her or to cause them pain. The hadith is in Bukhari. And hesitate here doesn't mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't know, should I, shouldn't I? Not this type of hesitation, just to make it clear. Hesitation here has a different meaning. It means that when somebody knows something has to happen, but at the same time, like when a person loves a person from one angle and hates to do certain things to them from another angle, but they have to be done. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that person and because of his love and mercy for that person, he hates to harm him or her, but even in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compensates them. My dear sisters in Islam, another sign is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ala inna awliya Allahi la khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun. Behold, the awliyas of Allah, the true servants of Allah, the ones who are closest to him, the chosen ones that who truly believe and truly have piety and taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear sisters in Islam, one of the greatest signs is the long hadith where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Jibreel alayhi salam, if, if he loves someone, he says to Jibreel, Ya Jibreel, I love them, so love him or her. And then the angel Jibreel goes to the rest of the angels of the skies and he says, Allah loves so-and-so and Jibreel loves so-and-so, so you love him. And all of them begin to love this person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Thumma fil -ard. And then his acceptance or her acceptance and love from others will reach them. And the love of people meaning the people who are mu'minin, the people who are believers, whenever they look at you, something, they don't know you, subhanAllah, probably have never seen you, but something about your face, something about your character, something about your presence makes this person love you. Have you ever been in a situation where you see somebody and you think, I don't know why my heart has opened up to this person, I love this person. Or this person begins to love you and you love their company and you don't know why. Maybe this is a person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen and made among his beloveds. My dear sisters, Listen to the beautiful hadith of Allah وسلم, which is a Sahih Jamil. Allah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, <clears throat> Inna lillahi ibadan ikhtassahum bin ni'ami limanafi'il ibad yuqirruhum fiha yuqirruhum fiha ma bathaluha fa idha mana'uha naza'aha minhum fa hawwalaha ila ghayrihim. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there are certain servants on this earth. There are certain people that walk this earth. 
whom Allah Ta'ala has specialized them and chosen them. Chosen them with blessings which he has given them, materialistic or with wisdom and knowledge, in order to benefit others. If Allah gives you something, it's in order to benefit yourself and then give it to others. Allah, Rasulullah says, Allah will keep that blessing with that person so long as they are using it for the benefit of themselves and others. But once they stop using it for the benefit of others, Allah takes it away from them and gives it to someone else who will do the same thing. Subhanallah. You know, we naturally get annoyed. We get irritated when people call us too much. People request things from us too much. People want our help too much. Someone comes to our mind and says, Subhanallah, where was this person? Two years they never spoke to me or even thought about me. I lost this and I lost that and this happened to me and that happened to me. The whole world checked on me except this person. And now when this person's in need, who do they come to? They come to me. How people are and then we start to complain. My advice to you, my dear, never ever complain of that because know this. The more that Allah sends people to you and the more Allah sends people to you who weren't even there for you, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highly likely has chosen you. He has chosen you to use you for the work which Allah has istakhlaf al nasa fil ard, what he placed the people on this earth to do. This is what he showed off to the angels. He says, in ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. I am placing on earth those like custodians of the earth, like people who will teach and grow my deen. So if Allah sends people to you, my sister, and you are able to help them, then know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put you through a trial before that, and you have gained a rank in which now you have you qualify to help other people, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدٍ خَيْرًا إِسْتَعْمَلَهُ If Allah wants good in a slave, if he wants good in a slave, Allah uses them. What, how does he use them? And obviously Allah doesn't need them. He uses you for yourself, but he qualifies you. Says, I'm going to make goodness come through this person, Allahu Akbar. Can you imagine you're a fountain? You're a fountain that's coming out like gushing pure water for everybody to drink, for all the ants and the insects and for all the children and the animals and the old and the young and the people. You become that fountain, Allahu Akbar. Always know my dear sister, never ever complain when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put you in that rank because now you are special. My dear sisters, Rasul Sallam also said, Inna lillahi ahleen. I mean, Allah has special people of His among the people on earth. Qalu wa man hum ya Rasul Allah. They said, Who are they, O Messenger of Allah? Qala ahlul Qur'an hum ahlullahi wa khasatih. Ahlul Qur'an hum ahlullahi wa khasatih. The special people on earth who are Allah's favored, who are His, and the word used here is Ahl. Ahl means family. So I'm from the family of Allah. So he said they are the people of the Qur'an. They are Allah's special family on earth and His special favored ones. Ahlul Qur'an does not mean people who just know how to read it and recite it or know how have memorized it. Ahlul Qur'an, meaning the people who read it and ponder upon it, reflect on it and learn the message in it. Allah says, Afala al Qur'an. Do they not ponder and reflect upon the Qur'an? And we at this pandemic, my dear sisters, we are so much in need of returning back to the Qur'an and understanding the Qur'an, to comprehend the Qur'an, to learn and ask what is it saying to us? How do we understand it? How do we understand it? La ilaha illallah. A person who memorizes the Qur'an and goes and, 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 and does fahijah, dirty acts, just because they have the Qur'an, they're not favored. Subhanallah. A person, Rasul Sallallahu told us, Rubba qari il Qur'an, Qur'an yal'anu. It could be that a person is reading the Qur'an while the Qur'an is cursing them. And there are others whom the Qur'an becomes a shafi'ah, becomes on the day of judgment. They are the people who learn the Qur'an and practice the Qur'an in their life as much as they can. These are the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rather than keeping it to themselves, they pass it on to others. And I finish it with these few examples of the prophets and messengers of Allah. Let us have a look at how Allah speaks about some of the prophets of Allah in the Qur'an. We already said, uh, my sisters, that to be chosen by Allah requires us to prove our patience. And we said that patience and Iman is like the head and the body. And then we said, 
in order to prove your patience, you have to go through tests. These tests are not for Allah. It's not the test like a teacher gives a test to know if you are, uh, if you know your stuff or not. Allah already knows. But in order to prevail it and show it to others, and in order to show yourself so that you yourself can do the effort and grow. There's a difference between when a person, a teacher gives the student the exam and when the teacher lets them prove to themselves who they are and what they are and what they need to do. When you learn first-hand experience, it's different than when a person tells you. If I told you about a person who has lost their wealth, you'll say, poor thing. If I told you about a person who's lost their child, you'll say, subhanAllah. But there's nothing the same as when you yourself have gone and experienced this, subhanAllah. It's indescribable. So every single prophet went through ibtila trials, and then they proved their patience, then they were chosen. Adam alayhi salam in paradise, what did Allah do to him? He told him, live in Jannah, you and your wife, you and your spouse, and eat and drink whatever you like, but don't come near this tree. He tested him with one sin. He failed that sin and ate. And then he was sent down to earth, not because it was a punishment, but because Allah now wants Adam and Hawa to learn through their own deeds. They have to go through struggles and trials because they're not ready to be in Jannah like that. And in order for them to be examples for others, not any. We're going to sin like them, so we have to go through trials in order to grow and earn our place. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he tell us about Adam alayhi salam? Allah says, وَعَصَى آدَمُ رَبَّهُ فَغَوَى Adam alayhi salam did disobey Allah and then he was led astray for a little bit. But then Adam and Hawa, they repented to Allah, such a repentance that it went so high. The repentance was so high. The humbleness and humility was so high that they became the first examples of true repentance and closeness to Allah after doing the wrong thing. Allah says, ثُمَّ اجْتَبَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ وَهَدَى So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then chose him. Chose him for what? He chose him as the first example of how to do repentance, of how to make istighfar and make tawbah. ثُمَّ وَهَدَى And he also guided him. He shows us how we are guided. We are guided by being repentant. My dear sisters, we know now, and I repeat again, in this pandemic, in this sickness, Allah subhanahu wa the ulama all said that there isn't a bala that comes down upon people. There is no uh, waba, sorry, there is no sickness or disease that comes down upon people as a whole, except because of the sins of people. And sins here doesn't only mean that they just left salat, it also means that they are corrupting in the earth. They are moving away from the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to be, from our natural, instinctive, innocent state we have gone, we start to steal, we start to cheat, we start to lie, we start to uh, uh, show off, we start to take the people's wealth, we start to uh, we start to, be, to become arrogant, we start to leave our salat, our song, we become showing off full of arrogance, we start to practice acts of a'udhu billah, acts of, 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 of bestiality and sexuality, excuse me for this saying, this, word. this is the world we live in subhanAllah, where we become, begin to normalize, we begin to normalize what before was considered only for animals, today we see human beings are normalizing and anyone who tells them don't do this, ya ammi, it's wrong, they think that you are the crazy one, people have lost their, their way in this way, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought this upon, and the only way that it will be lifted, only way that will be lifted is with tawbah and tawbah means to return and if this pandemic is lifted and people as a whole do not return especially the muslims allah will bring another calamity upon us and it'll only get harder and harder until allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wants us to come back he wants us to come back so then there is yunus alayhi salam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Lawla an min bil wa huwa if it wasn't that Yunus alayhi salam, he reached out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with seeking his forgiveness and humiliating himself before him until Allah's pleasure served him, he would have stayed in the uh, in the belly of the fish till the day they are raised. Allah says, فَاشْتَبَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَجَعَلَهُ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ until Allah chose him and made him among the righteous. He was the first example of dua and the first example of apology. What about Ibrahim alayhi salam? Allah tested him with his youth. He tested him with his father. He tested him with uh, domestic violence. He tested him with his people. He tested him with his son. He tested him with his wife. He tested him alayhi salatu wassalam with almost everything you can imagine. And last time was triumphant, Allah said, Salamun ala Ibrahim. Oh, peace be upon Ibrahim. If people do the example of Ibrahim and can learn from him, then 
they are muhsinin and this is how we'll also reward the muhsinin innahu min ibadina almu'minin indeed ibrahim is among our slaves who are mu'minin lastly it's yusuf alayhi salam he went through family violence he went through seduction he went into the prison as you know he had to face all the all the fear of death so did his father yaqub until his eyes became whitened from the the huzn from the deep sadness from the deep sadness and anxiety for yusuf alayhi salam until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa kadhalika yajtabika rabbuk right from the beginning Allah knows what you're going to go through look at your dream you're going to go through so many trials ya yusuf and Allah in the end is going to choose you because you're going to pass triumphantly subhanahu wa ta'ala in the end his brother said to him qalu tallahi laqad atharak Allahu alayna Allah has chosen you above us chosen him with what with the trials which he stood firm upon my dear sisters in Islam and lastly maryam alayha salam going through the trials of mental and emotional torture not only that physical torture although the physical pain is like any other woman she was in labor giving birth what was so special about her pain it was the mental and emotional pain she has no husband yet she's giving birth she's a righteous woman if she lived at a time where people are extremely judgmental they would stone people to death on the spot and then she comes back to them holding a child to the point where as she was giving birth at the trunk of the palm tree it was withered yani the trunk of the palm tree it was almost uh, um the trunk of the, the sorry the palm tree it wasn't withered sorry she was on the palm tree laying her back while she was in labor and giving birth and she cried saying ya laytani I wish that I would have died before this and become oh so forgotten a person should not wish for death but in that situation she was thinking about the humility of what she's going to have to face that she is a dirty wicked woman but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sent upon her happiness and comfort and security my sisters in Islam some of you have children and some of you will have children inshallah ta'ala my advice to you me as a parent as well to your children that this worldly life is not the life of rewards mark my words teach your children this life is not the life of rewards it is the life of trials and that the world of rewards is in the hereafter even the punishment's not in this life tell them the punishment is in the hereafter and that the trials in this world are only to make us better so if allah tries you and you pass them and are patient allah is lifting you in ranks however there is one, one specific materialist reward in this world that no one else gets when you pass trials you know what that is it is a strength inside your heart called sakina a strength of sakina that whenever you are faced with hardship in life you are stronger than the majority of the people in facing it and you can easily overcome it very quickly and after that you can even remain happy you can even remain smiling even while the pain is going through this is wallahi something wa ma yulaqaha illa sabr wa allah says no one can receive this type of reward except those who are truly patient wa ma yulaqaha illa dhu hazin azim only those who are endued with great fortune from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and blessings are able to reach this high rank to be able to have a special inner strength resilience patience to find the positive out of every negative to be faced with any hardship and see it as good for you to see it as good for you ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu said i love it when i wake up sick subhanallah they said which sickness is the best for you? he said i love humma means a fever they said why he said because the humma goes to every part of your body and i get rewarded for every part of my body that i am patient with listen to what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says and i end up with this beautiful beautiful hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there is nothing that a believer receives of hardship whether it is and i'll say these words in arabic first min wasab wasab means sickness well nasab nasab means physical hardship yani physical strain wala ham ham means anxiety wala gham gham means depression wala adha and no harm that comes to them from other people hatta shawkatu yushakuha 
even the tiny needle that pricks him or her. إِلَّا كَفَّرَ اللَّهُ بِهَا سَيِّئَاتِهِ مِنْ سَيِّئَاتِهِ Except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compensates that person by expiating and getting rid of some of their past sins. Subhanallah, how merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ They never really estimate Allah in the way that He is deserving of being thought of. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lift this pandemic off us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the right path. I ask Allah to have mercy upon those who have passed away. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite our hearts and to bring us back to his deen, maraddan jameela, a good return. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all those who have been patient in this struggling time, who have been helping in this struggling time. I thank all of them and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for goodness for them and their families and their children in this world and in the next. I thank you for listening, my sisters. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.